video, we're gonna go over some of the smallest species of turtles and tortoises in the world. And lucky for us and you, we happen to have some right here so we can show you just how small they really are. These are Pelusius nanus, also known as the African dwarf mud turtle. No surprise why, these things are literally full grown at only between sometimes two and three quarters inches and up to four inches. This is a breedable male. He will not get any larger than this, and believe it or not, this is an egg-laying reproductive female who will also not grow any larger. They are basically neck and neck as far as their length goes, She's just a little bit wider because she needs that bigger body cavity in order to carry eggs. These little chubsters are amazing. They have beautiful black shells with sometimes some brown or mahogany. They are side necks, so you can see that they carry their heads to the side. They pull it in with that S shape. They have beautiful yellow skin, and yellow plastrons. They're full of life and personality, very easy to care for, and they come from the continent of Africa. One of the areas they're found in, for example, is the Republic of the Congo. And they're really no different than any freshwater dwelling turtle here in the fact that they live in ponds and marshes. So this is the most recent new enclosure in our nature room and we have dedicated it to these Pelusius natus, African dwarf mud turtles. There are five adults housed in here and we used an old uh, donated to us four by two foot acrylic stock tank which is super heavy duty and it's beautiful and then I just took scrap wood and basically built around it so this can slide in and out if I need to drain it uh, and change the water and it slides right back in it's up on cinder blocks so that it doesn't have any risk of falling and it also catches the bottom uh, lip here in the front and back of it uh, the entire enclosure is six by two feet so that there are some land and nesting areas for the females and for the males to bask in the water, I have a sand substrate. These are mud turtles, so they do like to burrow into sand or mud. There's plenty of driftwood, rocks, and cork bark in there because these are not the best swimmers, so they do have to feel comfortable in there. The water is heated to about 75 degrees because they are not a cold dwelling species, and the warm water helps them to be strong enough to swim appropriately in here. On the left side of the enclosure, I simply recessed a heavy-duty Rubbermaid container and filled it with a mixture of sand, peat, and dirt so that the females can easily lay their eggs in there and any of them can actually go in there and burrow into land which mud turtles do even here in America. There are plenty of fake plants both aquatic and terrestrial to help the turtles feel at home. We've got full spectrum lighting and a mercury vapor bulb for appropriate lighting for basking and healthy shell growth. And the backdrop, if you guys go way back to when we were first making this nature room and also building Otis the Box Turtles enclosure, we used Smart Press to create this beautiful corrugated plastic sign that can get wet, but it's just simply glued to the back wall here and it is nice, it is aesthetically pleasing, and those are African wading birds. That is a shot from the Republic of the Congo where these turtles might be found. So that's about as authentic as it gets. The African dwarf mud turtle is considered by some to be one of the three smallest turtles in the world, along with the bog turtle and the common musk or stink pot turtle. Now we're all very familiar with the stink pot, but what about America's mud turtles? Because we have them too. These are also considerably small species. I have a yellow mud turtle, which is native to areas of the United States like Texas. And in this hand, I have an adult reproductive pair of striped mud turtles. These guys occur in the southeastern United States in areas like Florida, for example. Now this Texas mud turtle is a juvenile. He or she is not done growing yet, but we're not talking about a large animal. This turtle will grow to be maybe six inches, but probably more like four or five. However, these striped mud turtles are a fully grown reproductive pair. The female is the more lighter colored individual and the male is the darker colored one. She's actually a very old animal, still laying beautiful, perfect eggs. And this male is younger, but he will not get any larger. Just like the African muds, these guys have the same kind of care, shallower water with a muddier sandy bottom. They barely come out of the water except to sometimes bask or of course lay their eggs. But unlike the African dwarf mud turtle, these guys don't need as warm of water. The spotted turtle is of course one of the most iconic species across the globe and of course they called the United States of America their home. This is Dotsie. She's our resident nature room spotted turtle, but we have plenty more that you guys have seen out there in the big aquascape pond. She is a very special turtle and she is a perfect representative for her species. She is an adult reproductive female at only four inches. And this is the typical size for both male and female spotted turtle. Some of them, like the others we've already shown you, will grow to be only three and a half inches and on the very rare occasion, 
one might reach five inches. But that's what you're looking at, folks. That is a reproductive, fully grown adult. They are protected in just about every single place that they naturally occur in. So if you look to get spotted turtles, make sure you are fully aware of your state laws and never get your hands on a wild turtle. Now, when it comes to certain species, it's not always both genders that stay small. In the case of species like the American map turtles, the males are the smaller of the two sexes. They're so small that sometimes they are literally half or less than that the size of an adult female. So right here, I have a variety of three. Right here where my thumb is pointing to, this is the Oshita map turtle. In the center is the Mississippi map turtle. And to the right here is a black knob sawback, also a map turtle and part of the Graptomys genus. Much like diamondback terrapins, the males are really tiny compared to the females. Females, of course, need to be bigger because they're gonna be carrying those egg clutches. And in the case of map turtles, they're not usually that small, sometimes six or more. So there's really no reason for male map turtles to be any larger. Makes you wonder why it isn't that way with all species. Take North American wood turtles, for example. The males are usually larger than the females. Same case with marginated tortoises. Male map turtles are a wonderful example of a better choice for an aquarium or even pond in most cases for people that can't house the ever so popular large red-eared sliders or other slider and cooter species like our Florida red belly turtle right here, Jax. These species get huge and Jax is just a young female. She's only a couple of years old and she's got a lot more growing to do. These map turtles are all reproductive adult males and the Mississippi in the center will not get any larger, whereas the other two might get slightly larger, but they're already able to breed at these little tiny diminutive sizes. Typically male map turtles are fully grown at only four inches. Some may get up to about six, but for the most part, they are going to always be considerably smaller than those big adult females. Moving on to small tortoise species, it's appropriate to start with the Northern Hemisphere's smallest species of tortoise, which is the famous Egyptian tortoise. You guys have seen these two girls in plenty of our most recent videos. This is Vinny, this is Dolly. They are our Egyptian tortoises. This species is critically endangered, found only in Libya and possibly still in Egypt. And Vinny is a fully grown reproductive female where Dolly is getting pretty close. Like some of the other species that we've been covering, they're fully grown at only between three and a half and four inches. In addition to Egyptian tortoises, there are other very small varieties of tortoises on this planet. I happen to have three right here. In the middle is a Greek tortoise from Libya. This is not the Libyan Greek though. This is a Greek tortoise that is so far unnamed in science, meaning it has no true scientific name. It's just considered Testudogryca subspecies at this point. We talk more about these in depth back in the Egyptian tortoise video. This is a fully grown reproductive female right here. This tortoise is only about four and three quarters inches and she is perfectly capable of laying fertile eggs. Males are even smaller. To the right of her is the very famous endangered Western Hermans tortoise, Testudo hermani hermani. And although these are a small tortoise species, certain examples in nature do grow pretty large. Take the ones on the Italian island of Sardinia, for example. Those tortoises get to be pretty big, sometimes pushing eight inches. But when it comes to the Balearic Island of Mallorca, the tortoises are typically very small. This adult old, mind you, female is just barely bigger than this Greek tortoise and she also lays plenty of fertile eggs and she will not be growing any bigger. Males, again, are even smaller than this. Now there's more of a wide spectrum when it comes to the sizes of Western Hermans tortoises, but this is just another example of just how small some of these animals can be and a lot of people don't even realize it. Comparing to those map turtle males that I was showing you guys earlier, we have a male Indian star tortoise. Now on average, the male Indian star is going to be very small. It's of course gonna be smaller than the egg laying female, which can be upwards of eight or more inches depending on their geographical origin. But the males like this guy right here are only about five to five and a half inches. There is some variety there in size and there are larger males reported, but typically this is what you're gonna see out there are males that are fully grown around this size. These are three beautiful tortoises that are well represented in captivity for the most part and in all honesty make much better, smarter choices for most people than something like a leopard or sulcata tortoise that is going to grow very, very large. Thank <laughs> you. 
Of the 330 plus species of turtles and tortoises on the planet, there really is a large spectrum when it comes to the sizes of them. We're so used to the more common species like red foot tortoises and sulcata tortoises or red eared sliders that really grow to sometimes unmanageable sizes depending on what we have at our disposal when it comes to keeping them properly. Make sure you do your homework. Now, I'm not representing all the small tortoise and turtle species out there. There are certain ones that we can't get our hands on, and rightfully so. A lot of the padloppers from the Samobates genus, uh, and, and there are others out there, you know, bog turtles, we don't keep those, but those are all small turtle and tortoise species that are worth just reading up on. Even though they are species you may never be able to keep, they're still really fun to learn about when it comes to, the, to their ecology and their morphology. And don't be fooled, even though these turtles and tortoises in this video come in a small package, they are chock full of personality and charisma and they live just as long as the big ones for the most part. Both conservation and preservation are extremely important for these diminutive species of turtle and tortoise because their size has made them major targets for the illegal pet trade. I hope you guys were able to learn a little bit about these interesting little nuggets in this video and it shows you just a little bit of a look into that amazing world of turtles and tortoises.